Happy New Year and welcome to our January edition of our monthly training and marketing webinars, our first in 2017. As mentioned, my name is Terry. I will be joining us here today and excited to join you as we learn about Bullhorn's most exciting feature releases of this last quarter. Now, the features that have been made available to us, we're going to look at Bullhorn for email enhancements. Now, we have enhanced the way that the gadget searches for existing candidates as we parse in a resume. Bullhorn for email is available for corporate and enterprise edition. We're also going to take a look at the goals and quotas functionality, specifically focusing on a few enhancements we've made. We have added now client submissions as an option for assigning goals within our goals and quotas features. Upon receiving the latest release, client submissions will appear as an option with assigning our goals. And this goals and quotas functionality is available for enterprise edition only. We're going to be talking about a new feature, Bullhorn Canvas. It is our most robust reporting tool and is now generally available. Finally, we're going to explore some searching capabilities and highlight some new videos on the customer portal found within our Bullhorn Academy, a location we've introduced just at the end of 2016. As we start off, we're going to take it to Bullhorn for email. Now, Bullhorn for email is an email gadget that allows you to parse and add notes to records into Bullhorn from within your email inbox. Bullhorn for email is supported for a variety of email clients, computer operating systems, and browsers. In December, we enhance the way Bullhorn for email searches for existing candidates when you parse in a new resume. Now, the resume parser matches candidates first by their email address, then an exact name match, and finally, by a partial name match. So let's take a look at this email containing an update re updated resume from an existing candidate, Jordan Kendall. Notice here as I choose that bullhorn gadget. We can see as this option expands for us, the fact that Kendall might already have a record in bullhorn. Let me go ahead and refresh my view because what we'll be able to see in that sense is a profile essentially highlighting the green entity color that allows us to view that profile information. And then further, we'll be able to take action on those emails as well. Now, when we do get that record pulled up, let's see if I can get a visual for you here. Several actions can be taken to parse a brand new record and even parse an existing record. So as we can see, attachments have been made available for us. But in looking through the Bullhorn widget, we'll be able to find the option to parse brand new, parse as existing, and even take actions to further add notes and tasks to this location as well. So let me see while it's updating here, we can get a nice visual for you. If not, what we'll do is we'll be sure to make our way back so that way we can get it visible. Let me go ahead and try to get back into our view. I'm going to do a quick refresh, sign out and sign back in. I think that might help us out a little bit. All right. So as we get signed in, we're going to try attempt number two. Choose my bullhorn option. There we go. Now as we get this email pulled up, I can see by selecting that bullhorn widget, Jordan's name. Now notice, notice again that entity color with the record name. I can even jump to Jordan's record from here. But this alone, alongside location, the resume tab, notes, tells me Jordan already has a profile in Bullhorn. In addition to that, my email from Jordan had mentioned, hey, I've updated my resume. As I notice the attachments provided, by selecting that resume, I have a few options here, which includes not just parse new candidate, so if he didn't have a record already, I'd be able to parse right from here. But since Jordan already has a Bullhorn record, I can update his profile by selecting the resume provided and use parse as existing. All right, so as it's taking this action here, again, in December, we enhanced the way Bullhorn for Email searches for existing candidates when we parse in a new resume. 
Now that resume parser matches candidates first by their email, then exact name, and partial name. So as I take a look at this option, when I use that parser that is existing, notice it drives me right into Bullhorn. If you're not signed into Bullhorn and you try to use the widget, it will prompt you to sign in. So that way it knows it wants to communicate with your login and be able to take the action of which you noted. Now when we parse as existing, notice here, it's already identified Jordan's record is the one I want to update. It's going to add Jordan's resume into his profile. And in addition to that, it asks me what all do I want to update and reparse from within that profile alongside the resume. As I save, it's going to go ahead, update Jordan's record for me, and then that profile would be refreshed with the new information. In addition to parse as existing, I will highlight some additional options available here. If we wanted to simply attach a file to a record rather than override any existing information, for example, Jordan also provided me a cover letter. I can take this and rather than parsing to create a profile or updating fields from a cover letter, I simply want to attach it to Jordan's record. So again, by selecting the attachment of which they provided, I can then see further below as I scroll down those circular icons, the option to attach this file to an existing record. So you can continue to build out that profile with additional files sent to us. As we select that file, we can then identify which profiles in Bullhorn do we want to add this file to. Jordan is already identified since I am pulling right from the email I've received from them. If I want to attach to a job record, a contact record, placement, notice the entity icons are visible here. The color coding helps us highlight which record are we wanting to store against. By selecting and having that name, I can then choose attach. And it tells us the attachment has been added into Bullhorn. Now also too, if I make my way into Bullhorn, let me pull up Jordan here. By using my fast find skills, I can navigate into that Files tab and see here the two documents I've just added, the resume that we reparsed, as well as a copy of the cover letter. So it seamlessly adds those records in just by using those gadgets. Now notice, we can also take similar actions from our emails regarding adding new jobs, new contacts, and if you're on the Enterprise Edition, new opportunities and new leads. Finally. Adding notes and tasks are also available, alongside including the email body to save against the record in Bullhorn. Okay, so several actions available within the widget alone, but highlighting, of course, the updates on how we spot does an individual already have a Bullhorn record can help us determine do we need to parse as a new candidate or parse as existing. Let's go ahead and switch gears. Let's navigate next to talking about another feature for goals and quotas. Now also in December, we made an enhancement to our goals and quotas features. If you had attended the December webinar, you may have noticed some updates. Now goals and quotas can be found in our menu slide out for home and goals and quotas. Now more specifically on the activity goal side, I'm going to use this button right here to make sure I'm looking at those goals. This is going to allow us to track our users' performance goals and measure their performance relative to those targets. With that being said, the update we've provided and rolled out with is the fact we've added client submissions as now a trackable item that can be measured in the goals section. Simply by using the Add Goal button, we can identify here weekly or monthly goal, what's the time frame, and those are the two options. Now also, too, will identify what is the activity, what is the goal we're creating for that individual. Previously, you could add goals for users such as number of candidates that need to be added, interviews that need to be added, placements, all the way down the line to different actions, pre-screens, CVs. With that being said, as you identify the goal for that individual, you would then highlight, well, who are the individuals that we are assigning that goal to? After choosing the user, then we highlight what is the total goal for that individual. 
So while we have been able to track placements and pre-screens, well, adding client submissions was a natural addition. So using that ad activity dropdown, we should see right here, right away, client submissions added, and then choose the users we want to identify that goal for. So if I use Morel, and I highlight here, she has three client submissions that she needs to document on a week, I can then save. Now once those goals are set, both ourselves and Morel and anyone else with access to the goals and quotas list can view this list at any time to check their progress and then also to do a little friendly competition on others that have that same goal for the same time frame. Just like any list in Bullhorn, you'd be able to set filters based off this goals and we could set filters by name so we can track for a particular individual or be able to track goals based off the activity type. As I come in here and filter on client submissions, I can see who all has a client submissions goal. I can see the goal itself and how many have been documented. So actual to goal will be visible here, and that percent attained is also visible. So you can use filters within these columns to help manage who and what is that goal. All right. Now, in addition to that, if you're an administrator, you can also define custom goals under the settings button at the top right. Now, again, we already have a few set up. Like I mentioned, the the pre-screens, we also have interviews. Well, also too, new goals you can create. And you can create these goals based on either a note or an appointment type. So if you have any, well, as we talk about notes, best practice when documenting conversations. So if you have any conversations you tend to track and you want your team to do and, and do a certain amount in a given week or month, you can add it as a goal right here by using the Add Goal button and by placing your cursor into that goal field, you can then highlight, well, what's the name of the goal? What's the activity we want them to document? So looking at note types and appointment types, I can identify anything in particular. For example, quality check calls that need to be done. After saving out that particular goal, lets us know our changes have been saved. And in our goals and quotas list, we can easily add in that goal choose the individual, is it weekly or monthly, and how many do they need to do. And it gets added to our list automatically. So in addition to be able to track the details from this list, from this location, if you have any goals of your own, you can also keep track of your own progress against your goals from your dashboard. And then any users who you set goals for will be able to track their own progress as well in addition to this list. Simply in your dashboard. If I head into that menu slide out for my dashboard, we'll be able to see a My Activity card. Now the My Activity card, if not already visible, can be added using the Add Card button at the top right just like all other dashboard cards, and it's going to be specifically found at the bottom under the general location. Now in looking at that card, we can see the goal that's been set for us. Is it weekly, monthly, what's our goal, and how many have we documented? Okay, so if it's weekly, we can see, all right, how far are we along? You know, if it gets to Friday, we can see, all right, I've done great, I got all my goals accomplished, or looks like I might be staying a little late today. So we can always track that detail as well as all your end users. So keep those locations in mind, a great place to measure that progress. Now, as we transition to our next item here, one of the more exciting releases we've had in a while is Bullhorn Canvas. Bullhorn Canvas is our new business intelligence suite that lets us understand and explore virtually every aspect of our business. Whether it's KPIs, our key performance indicators, or business metrics, activity, financials, Born Canvas enables us to easily visualize and understand data, delivering the insights we need, and uh, also, too, to help us make important business decisions in real time. So as you can see through our menu slide out, Canvas gives us a shiny new menu option. 
So the beauty of Bullhorn Canvas is that the possibilities of what you can report on are virtually endless. You can save reports to rerun on a regular basis, as I have a few here. You can also to refine them over time. Now I will also mention, before we create a report here, you can report on any field, including custom fields, custom objects, contained within all main Bullhorn entities. In your reports, you can create reports based off candidates, companies, contacts, if enterprise leads and opportunities, but also too, the list goes on, placements, notes, internal users, so like I said, virtually endless. I wasn't lying to you. The rest of Bullhorn, just like the rest of Bullhorn, I should say, field names, entities, they will reflect the terminology you've configured for your company in those field mappings and entity titles, respectively. All right, now, enough of me talking about, let's dive in, let's see how this works. From our Canvas landing page, we can add new reports by using that Add button. But I also want to talk about, again, with your existing reports, you can run, you can modify, edit, copy, or even delete. Let's go ahead and create new. I'm going to use this Add button here. Now, when we hit Add, we're required to label out the report. In addition to that, we can add a description, and this is optional. And then also, too, we can see the visibility. If we leave our report private, only we can see it. Only I can see it in this instance. Though if I make it public or share it, my coworkers, I can provide them access to run this report. Public is sharing with everyone. And then shared is saying, hmm, which individuals do I need to share this report with so they can run it as well? So you essentially got to pick and choose. I'm going to leave mine private here for today, and I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now, Bullhorn Canvas, what we will notice, opens up in a new tab for us here. And it should open up right away. So let me go ahead and just enter in my credentials and make that visible for us here. In this new tab, here it is. Canvas is broken out into six main sections. We have our menu bar up at the top and the shortcut or a ribbon right below which contains all of our action items. And this includes buttons such as saving, run, okay, so a couple key buttons here, but also to some other features are available such as grouping records together summarizing or totaling, and even setting filters. So just a handful of functionality that I've provided, much more is also available in this view. Also, we have this source tab to the left, and this contains all of our reportable fields divided out by entity, or as you see here, analysis packages. We have candidate and company, job, placement, all the way down the line. Again, lots of options here. Now also too, as we drill down within these analysis packages, we can see all the different field options provided in order to build out our reports. Now before we talk further about that source tab, I want to highlight here, we also have a toolbox. And this contains all of our different report formats. For example, when we want to create a list report, when we want to create a chart report, map as a few examples. This property section would also give us some additional action items, such as being able to highlight field types, titles. We can adjust fonts within our reports, and we can even adjust colors. For example, if you create graph reports and you want to tailor those graphs to represent your company's colors, you can do that all within here. Finally is Canvas, our blank canvas pun intended, which is where we will build our report by dragging and dropping items from the source and the toolbar tabs. Okay. Now, with that being said, let's create a quick, simple report that really shows us, in this example, how many new lead and active candidates each user in our company owns. So we're going to start by creating a list report, and under each section, our fields we'll find will be in alphabetical order. So if I start off in this toolbox, I can see here this list option, 
As I find that list, I'm going to drag and drop it over to my Canvas view. Now, when I drag that option, it's going to ask me to highlight, well, what is the name here? So I'm going to highlight this as my new candidates report, and I'm going to label my report to give me that information, and choose OK. Now I can see the list format has been provided for me. So this gives me the structure. Source is where we can build in the details. And by using these analysis packages really helps us define, define the results we want to see. So if I expand out this candidate section, I'm going to go into candidate owner because I want to find those candidates by recruiter. Again, these fields are in alphabetical order, as mentioned. So once I find that recruiter, I'm going to drag it on over to that right-hand side. In addition to that, I want to get that candidate count per person. All staying within this one analysis package, all I have to do is simply drag and drop these values into the report. Now, because I want to see the status of these candidates, I can scroll down to Find Status. Now, because if I have these three columns, who's the owner, the candidate count, and status, those are the only values I need. But I want to specifically focus on candidates and two statuses, new, lead, and active. So by going into that status column, that filter icon I mentioned earlier, I can set a filter. And I can choose to only show me those candidates that are active and in a new lead. In addition to that, because I have several recruiters in my company, I probably want to group them by name just so I can see all those individuals and the candidate counts per person. So by coming into that column header, I can group. And we're going to see how that's utilized here. The last thing is count. So I can see how many are in new lead, how many are in active, but I probably want to total it out. So between the two statuses, how many total new candidates do they have? Okay. So by using that column header, I can use the sigma icon to then total them out to summarize. As we save our report, I do have the run button and I can then see the details. Okay. So I can see here the count. My coworker Eloise has one active candidate and 172, 172 new leads, which brings us to a grand total of 173. Okay, and the total counts just continue. Okay. Excellent. So that is just one report. What I just showed you here is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much you can do. Bullhorn Canvas, I'll mention, is available in all product editions, and although the feature comes at an additional cost, the value add to Bullhorn and your business is well worth it. So for more information on Canvas detail, costs, please be sure to reach out to your account manager for more information. The last thing to highlight here is uh, an update from our Bullhorn Academy, specifically our customer portal. Now we introduced the customer portal, home of our Bullhorn Academy, to you back in August, but we've been making updates ever since then. Remember, we can access that portal just by using the Get Help button at the top right of your Bullhorn login. Now, if for any reason you're not signed into Bullhorn, you can also get to the Academy by going to Customer Portal, Dot bullhorn dot com. And it's a good idea to bookmark that site. Now, in addition to using our filters, we now have the ability to search our video library. So with this update, it's much easier to find what we're looking for, and we can search by title or keywords associated with the video. As an example, as I type CV and hit search. This is going to update the videos in our view to find all those videos as they relate to our resumes. Now, in addition to that, we are continually adding new content. Recently, we added both a training video for Canvas and more videos about our admin functionality and even several more videos that detail our Bullhorn Pulse cards. Now, these videos, I definitely recommend checking them out because they are interactive and they simulate navigating through the application itself and you can even watch them on your mobile devices. So we also added a new filter into this dropdown for what's new. Okay, and then that'll update our list. Here's that Canvas video, come check it out. We just got a snippet of, again, part of what Canvas functionality is available for us to do.
Okay. Now also too, in the same location, you can always review all our monthly product updates by using the location up at the top right. Excellent. Well, before we go to Q&A, a word from our sponsor about Engage 2017. I'll let Emily tell you more. Thank you. As Terry said, we have our annual user conference coming up June 7th through the 9th in Boston. Engage is an incredible opportunity to deepen your bullhorn knowledge. It's offers a full day of in-person professional training and two days of educational sessions with more than 30 exceptional speakers. Past attendees have rated the content a stellar four out of five stars. Uh, you can register today and use code WEBINAR100 to get the best price. We hope to see you in June. And with that, we're going to get to a couple of questions here. We had um, a a few questions come in regarding um, how how we can get the widget and what the overall um, requirements would be for that. And we're actually going to attach a file to the email that we follow up with with the webinar recording um, to be able to offer more of that information to you. Um, but question for Terry. Um, if they don't currently have the widget, how can they go about getting that? All right, so if you do not currently have the widget and after seeing those exciting functionalities, I definitely am with you in getting that enabled. First of all, take a look at the documentation that will be sent alongside this recording, but also too, I have you take a look at that because there's certain settings to help accommodate that gadget. Things such as certain Outlook settings or Gmail, Google business apps. Also, if you find that in that document, that matrix that's sent to you fits the settings that you have, reach out to our support team and they'll be able to assist. Excellent. Thank you, Terry. Um, another question regarding how, how we can come by things. Um, one question came through that they did not have the goals and quotas feature and were wondering how they could get that and what the requirements would be for that as well. All right. Well, go, goals and quotas, that is available in the Enterprise Edition only. And if you are on currently the Enterprise Edition, then you can certainly reach out to Bullhorn Support and they can turn it on for you. If you already have goals and quotas, then you will have the new functionality automatically. So being able to add those goals, being able to highlight who they're for. So again, if you don't have them, you're on Enterprise, reach out to support. And we have a theme with our questions today because very similar question around Canvas in terms of what are the requirements, who is it available to, and how do we go about getting it? All right, so Canvas is available for all product editions. For an extra cost, if you speak with your account manager, you're going to find this well worth it. They'll be able to give you some additional insight into the, the, the details alongside that cost too. Wonderful. And we had a question from Chris asking if um, reports can be exported into Excel. Excellent question. So yes, when you generate these reports, especially from Canvas, let me go ahead and I will pull up, let me go ahead and pull up my workspace here. You can export to a variety of formats, HTML, PDF, and even yes, Excel is an option. Wonderful. Excellent. So with that, we're, we're just about out of time. We're going to go ahead and end the webinar for today. There were some great additional questions asked, and we'll be doing our best to reach out shortly to wrap up and give you guys the answers to those questions. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your week.